Hey YouTube, Corpusan here and welcome to the fifth episode of our mini-series Zero to Hero, the leveling and progression series where we're starting out on a fresh account without any characters on it as we try to get as strong as possible before the Destiny update is released mid-June. In this episode we're going to reach new heights and defeat the Kales Root Abyss bosses for the first time by of course ourselves. In the previous episode we reached 7,500 stats and proved our gear with the cube seal, but to get ready to blow up those Kales Root Abyss bosses we'll need to get more damage, boss damage, ignore defense and more stats. So basically we need to get everything up. My goal for the next few days is to get those through link skills mostly. Link skills are amazing for getting big boosts in stats without putting any major effort in. Usually getting a character to level 120 is already enough to make a decent jump in certain stats. I got a Kana, Hoyong and Demon Avenger to level 120. The Kana link skill increases damage by 10% at level 2. The same goes for the Demon Avenger and Hoyong increases ignore enemy defense by 10% and increases damage on monsters whenever a monster has full HP, so basically on her first hit, which could be useful when we're grinding and we just cannot one-shot those monsters yet. And the Kana and Demon Avenger Legion blocks will buff boss damage slightly as well, so it's a double win. Link skills, like the one from Demon Avenger, can go up to level 3, but getting a character on a new account to level 210 can be quite a bit of work, very time consuming, and we only gain like 5% additional damage. While this still is always nice to get, we don't need to work that hard for now for such a small increase. We'll just leave the class at level 120 and slowly get it up to level 140 for the bigger Legion block. I also coin cap on those Link skill characters so I can purchase notes and a lot of other good stuff from the event store. I also transfer the mesos and cubes that we're getting on these characters to my main, so it's slowly funneling into my main as well. Since mastery books will become obsolete with the destiny update in a few weeks, all mules will have all skills stuck at level 10 so I can just save a bit more mesos. They will not go past level 140 anyway. In the meantime, the main was not sitting idle though. We started our journey about 4 weeks ago and I did my dailies for almost every day except one. I wish I just had more time to play maple, but I didn't have that much time recently days. But I did make sure to at least do my dailies almost every day. We slowly leveled up while completing those and I finally beat the batch out of Magnus after way too many tries. I also bought an android just so I could get a few more stats. I'm not gonna go for the fairy heart because I could use those 2 billion mesos for a lot of other things than just getting a heart. This heart will come back in the future anyway. With a few more stats we're at 8k again with a lot more damage. A good way to measure if your character is at the right level to take on Kales for the Abyss is to just take a swing at Kales Sukum. When fighting this boss try to defeat his arms on one side first so you have some safe spots so the arms won't come down anymore. The same goes for that other phase where he just goes and starts clapping his arms together. He won't slap his arms together on the platforms where there aren't two arms on the opposite sides. For phase 2 just make sure you don't get hit by the falling rocks and stand in the green zone when Zakum comes crashing down through the roof. And that's an easy clap. We had one unfortunate death but that was it. This is a good sign though that we are slowly getting ready for Chaos for the Abyss. Next we're getting more boss damage and ignore defense by leveling up a demon slayer whose link skill gives 10% boss damage to level 70 and a luminous whose link skill gives 10% ignore enemy defense also at level 70. By the way if you are creating a luminous and you find yourself without a secondary and can't attack walk back to the house where you start at the portal on the right of that map where you start. To get that one, I was kind of confused why I like, couldn't start attacking monsters right away. We could get the classes to level 120 as well for an additional 5% boost in both boss damage and ignore defense, but together with the additional buffs from the event, I think we're just slightly over prepared already, at least for 3 doors, so we should be good. Oh, and I also leveled up my Kana using some more leveling potions. Grinding to level up? No, thank you. My Legion was also ready to rank up, but the next level will only give me one more spot and it doesn't actually do anything to my board. I can use those Legion coins for a lot of other things and I haven't even filled up all available character slots yet, so I'm not ranking up my Legion just yet. So, this event, besides giving us a lot of stats, is also giving us 20 cubes that we can use. I wanted to get slightly more magic attack or like IED or boss damage on my secondary. We will still need to get a shield which can get star force which is so much better. But I figured if I want to get slightly more boss damage and ignore enemy defense a few free cubes wouldn't hurt on the secondary and it's not like the lines that we had were that great anyway. Well. 20 painful cubes later and we got absolutely nothing, we got blasted. We actually lost stats, but I couldn't let that happen, so I bought 18 red cubes to try and save face for this video. <laughs> but unfortunately I was suffering from success and the first red cube actually ranked it up to legendary. 
a few more cubes in and we rolled 12% magic attack and 18% int. I really wanted to get some more boss damage and ignore defense, but looking at the state of my wallet, we're okay with these results. I figured with the few cubes that we have left, I might as well use them on my shoulder and that ranked up as well. Man, those red cubes are like super OP. We rolled for a total of 12% int with it on it, so I'm more than happy with that. And after a few rolls, I also got my belt to 9% int as well. So now we're at 8.8k stats, which is a massive increase compared to last episode. We leveled up one more time and improved our Arcane River symbols. I also re-rolled my inner ability to get those lines. I'm keeping them for now. We've not been that lucky with our inner abilities, so I'm just keeping this forever, I feel like. <laughs> now we're at 9.2k stats, which is not bad, man. What a few cubes and a few more dailies can do. So, with Familiars, we are now at 89% Ignore Defense and 136% Boss Damage. This should be more than enough to take down 3 doors and defeat Kael's Velum with some effort. I leveled up my nodes as well and got a new boost node with Chain Lightning, Frozen Orb and Blizzard. Now I actually have 2 boost nodes that are both boosting Chain Lightning, which will be a massive help for us because we'll get over 50% more final damage because we have 2 of them. With all that done, we pop a green potion, a blue potion from Monster Park and purchase a buff from the Legion Store. You can also go and get an event buff like one hour it's exp and the other hour gives you a nice stat boost which you can use as well if you're struggling and after that we're off to take down kills rude abyss starting with the worst out of the three the clown pierre Actually, I find Pierre the easiest one. I'm pretty sure we have the damage to burst him down, so we don't need to deal with his split mechanics. Just whittle him down until he has about 30% of his health left, then wait for your hand to be of the opposite color of his, pop infinity and your other buffs, bind him, and then throw everything that you have at him until his health bar reaches zero. Make sure to dodge the hats that are falling down if you need it, and that's literally it. It was a pretty chill fight. I might have been slightly overprepared. <laughs> Next up is the chicken Von Bon. This boss is pretty telegraphed. His biggest strength is that it's difficult to actually see what he's up to at times. Once his health is down by about 30%, he will start doing that one shot jump attack. But he will always shoot two orbs before jumping, so just keep that in mind and you should be fine with anticipating when he actually jumps. If you're playing with sound on, you can also hear a sound cue when he jumps as well. I actually made a mistake when I died in that other dimension. I should have just kind of stayed dead, so I didn't need to die another needless death. <laughs> but besides that, the fight also was pretty chill. Next up was Queen, and not having the Mihil Link skill is kind of scary in this boss, so we gotta play it safe. Whenever Queen spawns those hearts, make sure to stick to one side, and I used my long range attacks to deal with the mirror for most of the times. Make sure to pop that shield skill that blocks out statuses as well, and be careful for the zombify. Being able to slow bosses is actually massive for this class, and it did help me to keep a safe distance at most times. We had two deaths, but it was a pretty decent fight overall. By the way, if you're looking for a boss guide with more in-depth mechanics, make sure to check out our bossing guide video that will be linking or like appearing somewhere at the top right. And now we have three pieces of the CRA set. We use the transfer hammer mechanic to move over the stars from the panstar hat to my fav hat. We do the same with the overall to the top and we got the bottom up to speed with some star force and potential of our own. I don't really have the mesos or spares to focus on star forcing right now, so we're just leaving everything as it is, not going for 17 stars this time. Imagine finally getting your CRA gear and blowing it up at the same day. <laughs> with the new gear, we're now almost at 9.7k stats, so we take down Chaos Sukum just to test how strong we've grown. We're killing him like three minutes faster right now compared to before. I also reflamed my head as well for, with some event flames for a few more stats, and now it's time to see if we actually can measure up against uh, Seavel. Velam was a lot tougher as expected. Having never done this boss on a teleporting class required a bit more practice than I would hope for. It can be really annoying when you're close to the corners where you're playing a nice lighting mage, because if the travel distance is lesser than your actual teleport distance, your teleport just doesn't go off. Imagine like being close to a wall, you're trying to flash jump, and then the flashing just doesn't work because you can't jump the entire distance. That's basically what's going on. Also, teleporting away from one rock puts me in a range of another rock, which resulted in a lot more deaths that could have been avoided if I was a bit more practiced, keep in mind it's not like my first runs on this account ever. We got close to beating him a couple of times, but it wasn't until after the Sunday stream that I was finally able to take down Chaos Vellum. With lives to spare as well, we got 11 pieces and we need 15, so we need to defeat the Big Worm one more time to get the Fav weapon. And after that we're gonna push for 10k stats. This is my gear as of right now, with the Destiny update getting closer and closer, I think that even though I haven't been playing that much, we're still making some pretty decent progress. My next goal is to save up for cubing the Fav set, we're going to be fighting 
fighting princess no in the hopes for a coloring and once i'm slightly stronger i'll try to take down heart magnus for a new cape and shoes and of course i'll keep working on legion and link skills as well as, as we move along and that was all for today i hope you enjoyed today's episode and as always many thanks to our members for making videos like this possible many thanks to Niels de Konek, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, Riley Oss, Terry Kim, Varys, Kaudi Mora, Wiley, History Cannon, Backspace OTI, Safronix, Anwar NHI, Ziggy Deer, Flidiot, Knife Suit, Chen125, Cloudvix, Gusus Rodriguez, Froggy, Vyra, Trevor, Michael Machaka, Ratius, Justin Vale, Silvio Nato, Stevie Zhang, Afterlord underscore MS, Seamark, Striker Elk, Tidal One Pun, Victor Sundstrom, Radical Jaws, Riser RU, Gummy Bullet, Lovebird, Certito655, Matteo Simonson, Mr. Anark, Galando Balavia, my name is Corpusan, and I'm super cute XOXO, PC Game Life, Dante Victory, Stanislaus Sumo Vegas, Level 243, Paladin Reboot, The Passenger, Martin Ponzik, I'm Disappointed, Lucky Beats, Gabriel Eck, Pedro Bonetti, Conrad Cristales, and Ace Lined. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling!